All right, welcome back guys. This is Ivan from BurningBiz.com. And if you watched our last tutorial, we built a little, uh, let me switch, we built a little uh, button box. So basically we have four buttons uh, that's all connected to a DigiSpark and using a shift register to actually only use three pins on the DigiSpark. Now what we're gonna do today, we're gonna take this project from a breadboard and we're gonna design a PC board uh, using an online service called EasyEDA.com. And it's an online uh, thing. You don't have to install anything on your PC. You create the uh, PC board directly online. And then uh, when you're done, you can actually order PC boards and they'll send them to you. Um, so the reason I'm doing this is because I've made PC boards before using, uh, you know, a little PEF board like this. And also I tried etching uh, PC boards. Um, these are good in a way for a very small project. If you don't have a lot of connections, uh, they tend to take a long time to do, and also uh, they don't look that good, uh, but they do work. I mean, this is a solution if you have a one-off or you just want to do a quick thing to move from a breadboard to uh, something more permanent. Uh, the other thing, etching your PC board, I've tried that too. Uh, the problem with that is that it uses pretty harsh chemicals. Uh, it's very messy, you have to wear gloves. I mean, it's corrosive stuff. And uh, basically you take a copper board, you draw on it, or you transfer uh, from a laser printer, and then you etch the copper out. Uh, you need to do it in a well-ventilated area. And depending if the uh, temperature of the solution is not high enough, or you don't agitate it enough, uh, you might have uh, bad results. So you need to do it again. Uh, the other thing I talked about in a prior tutorial, it was uh, using our CNC machine to do milling of PC board. Uh, now, I've seen a lot of tutorials on that. I see pe I've seen people doing that. I mean, it looks very cool. I mean, you have a CNC machine, it's milling uh, the PC board, and then you have a finished product that you can use. Uh, the problem with that is the setup of the CNC takes a long time. Uh, you need to get the right bits uh, because this, these are very small traces that you're gonna make. And if you don't have a CNC on hand right now, I mean, it doesn't really make uh, sense to buy a machine like that just to do PC boards. Uh, you might as well use a service like we're going to see today that are going to make PC board professionally uh, with silk printing and uh, solder mask and all that stuff. So basically you can concentrate on making the PC board and not having to worry about creating it. Uh, so uh, the way I'm going to do this today, I'm going to share my screen and you guys, I'm going to create the PC board uh, that is going to be uh, housing all these components. And I'm gonna fast forward through some things because uh, this could get boring very fast. So I'm gonna stop talking now. So we're gonna jump in and go to easyeda.com and start building our PC board. So let's go check that out. All right, so here we are at the Easy EDA webpage, as you see here. Uh, so this is the home page. Once you get there, you just click on login right here and you register for a new account, the uh, username and password, your email and register. So once you've registered, then you can log in. And once you've logged in, then you can create a new project. So we're gonna click on new project right now. Uh, now you have a choice to do a new schematic by using these electronic symbols if you want to. But for our project, since it's very small, it doesn't have a lot of connections. And if you're new to creating PC board, this is a good way to go because basically all the connections are gonna be the same connections that you have on your breadboard. So it's very easy to uh, duplicate. So I'm gonna click on new PC board and you get to a blank canvas like this. Uh, now, we might want to change the, uh, the units here because this is uh, mills. So what we're going to do, we're going to go to canvas attribute and we're, I'm going to put it to, you could, you could do inches or millimeters. I'm in Canada, I'm used to millimeters, so I'm going to click that and there you go, that changed. Uh, now, the next thing we need to do is find parts. So we're going to start with the resistors. We need six of them since we have six buttons. So we're going to click down here we're gonna to go to true hole because we're not using surface mount. So true hole and in there you'll find RC05, 06, those are all resistors. And you can see the preview window here will change. So for our purposes, RC07 is like the regular standard uh, resistor that everybody uses. So we're gonna click it. And then as you can see on our canvas, we can put, so I'm gonna click six times, one, two, three, four, five, six and escape to get rid of this tool. There you go. Now, first thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna rename these guys. So I'm gonna double click on the R1 and put 10K. Uh, basically what this is, is the silk printing on the board, what will appear. So 
There you go, click out, so you have 10K. So I'm going to do it for each one of those, so I'm going to speed that up. All right, so there we are. Now they're all done. So first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to align all these guys. So I'm going to select them all, click and drag. All selected. I'm going to go up here, align to the left. So they're all aligned on the left side. I'm going to reselect again, and I'm going to press the space bar, like so. So to rotate, because I know that on my PC board, they're going to be horizontal like this. There you go. So that's done. Uh, the first thing I want to do, I want to try to uh, do a normal uh, same spacing between each one of them. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to select this tool here, PC board tool. I'm going to go to change the origin and I'm going to click around the first one right here. Click and that sets the zero zero near this one. So if I click on this one now and I go to the right X location, I can change it to, let's say, two millimeters. And as you see, it moved a little bit. So this one is at two. This one is at seven. So now I'm going to do plus five on that one. So that would be 12. So let me align all of these and speed that up. And there you go. Now they're all aligned. So I'm going to select them all again and just move them out of the way for now. So there you go. Put them here. So the next part we need, we need the cherry switches. So we're going to go to, and that's the cool thing about Easy EDA is that customers actually build parts and they share it. So you can search for parts without having to create your own. So what we're going to do, we're going to go to more libraries. And we're going to search for Cherry MX. And you see some of them are only schematics, as you can see here. And as you go down, these are schematics. And there you go. Now you have PC board um, a representation of the switches. Now, for my purposes, I chose, I think it's on the page number three. Yeah, so our purposes, uh, I'm, I'm choosing this one. It's the uh, representation of a Cherry MX switch with the keycap outline. There we go. So that's the one I want right here. So I just click place and then there you go. I can place as many as I want, like I did with the resistor. So I'm going to click six times on those. One, two, three, four, five, six. And there we go. Escape to get out. Now I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to rename each one of these. I'm going to align them and I'm going to speed that up a little bit. All right, so there we go. Everything is renamed, everything is aligned properly. So I'm gonna select them all again and move them out of the way. Now, the next thing I need is the, um, the DigiSpark that we're gonna use. So I'm gonna go back to my search function here. I'm gonna click on, D I'm gonna search for DigiSpark. Search for that and I'm gonna use to user component. And the one I chose was this one right here. So I'm gonna place that one and I can rotate. And there we go by pressing spacebar. And I just need one of those, so escape. And I'm going to do the same thing, rename all these guys. So let me do that. And there we go. So that's done. So I can move this guy out of the way. Now the only piece missing is the shift register. So that's the CD4021. So let me search for that guy. And there we go. On this one, you have the schematic and sometimes the PC board. So the one I need is the true hole. It's this one here. So I'm going to place that guy right there and escape out, rename it, double click and name that one CD4021BE. And there we go. Now we have all our parts. Now what we need to do is place them roughly on uh, in um, the uh, positions that we want. So I'm going to select all the switches. I'm going to move those around here. I'm going to select the shift register, put them around here, select all the resistors. So let me drag those guys about here. And then I have my DigiSpark, which I'm going to put at the bottom right there. And there you go. So that's roughly the look that I want for the PC board. Everything is aligned properly. The distances are okay. You can zoom in with the scroll wheel to make sure everything is aligned properly, as you can see. So now that all my components are placed the way I want them to appear on the PC board, and uh, keep, it, keep uh, in mind that everything right now is on the top layer. 
Okay, so I placed everything on the top layer. I'm gonna make all my connections uh, because what I want is the buttons to be on the top layer, of course, but I want these components here, the uh, shift register, the, um, these resistors, and the DigiSpark to be on the bottom side uh, of the board. So I'll switch that once I made all my connection. Now, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna look at my schematic that I created uh, for this tutorial, and I'm gonna make all these connections the same way. Uh, so basically, let's say the uh, P0 goes to pin uh, 3 on the CD4021. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go here. I'm going to go to trace right here, connect pad to pad. I'm going to click that. I'm going to go from P0 to pin 3. And there you go. So now that that connection is made from P0 to pin 3, if I grab the DigiSpark and I move it around, as you can see, it will stay connected. So I can make all my connections and move these components afterwards and everything will, keep, uh, will be uh, connected. So I'm gonna follow the schematic, I'm gonna make all the connections and I'm gonna speed that up and we'll be back once it's all done. So let's uh, go ahead and do that. All right, so now we created all the connections. And as you can see, I can grab something and they will follow. They will adjust also depending on where each component is. But these are not the traces. These are just imaginary connections that the system is gonna to use to create those traces. Now, the last thing we need to do, we need to go to create a board outline. So we were on top layers. So we're gonna click on board outline to make sure we're writing on that. So let me just do the quickly the board outline. So let me fast forward to that. So we're just going around. All right, so we created the board outline. We can zoom in a little bit to adjust it. Let me just get rid of this. Here we go. Let me zoom in. Right click enables you to move, by the way. Like, like you can see, I'm holding a right click. Uh, so now I can adjust these points to make sure they're straight. So let me move here, this looks fine. Let me go down, this looks good too. And this guy probably, there you go, square. So let me zoom back out, let me readjust. And there you go, so that would be the PC board itself. So for me, that's good enough. Now, like I was saying, these components are all on the uh, top layer. As you can see here, if you go here, let's say we have the top layer and we remove it, and we remove the top silk layer, you see everything is sitting on the top uh, layer. Now, like I was saying at the beginning, I want the buttons on top, but I want these components um, underneath. So I'll, I'll put them underneath, that way the space will be free and I can make my box flush with the buttons without these guys being uh, in the way. So now that all the connections are made, which is pretty cool, I can just go ahead and click on one and then go to its uh, attributes and say, well, that one's gonna be on the bottom layer. So when I click that, as you can see, it's reversed now because it's on the bottom. So I just need to grab it again and just put him in his place. I'm gonna do the same thing for the DigiSpark. I'm gonna go bottom layer on that one too. There you go, it's switch. Now that guy is pointing this way to connector. I want him pointing this way for me. So I'm gonna rotate by pressing space. One, two, there we go. Let me move them back like in the middle here. And then we have the resistors. So let me grab all of them like so. And we're gonna put those up, you can't. So then we're gonna do the same thing for all the resistors one by one. So let me speed through that. It's a good way to check. So there you go, these are on the bottom. These are on the top and that's what I want. And this is my, the size of my board. So now everything is, should be ready to go. So we're gonna go up here and we're gonna click auto router. So let's click that now. These are all general. We shouldn't need to, to touch these. These are all standard sizes. So let's run that. And there we go, it's, it's uh, running now. And there you go, router completed successfully. So okay on that. And here you can see now the traces. The bottom layer, Traces are in blue, the, uh, the red ones are on the top. And there you go. So that's our board. That's what we're gonna order.
So when you're ready to order, you just click on here, this little icon, Fabrication Output, click on that. It's gonna ask you to save it, so we're gonna save it here, button box, YouTube. Save that. And then click again. And there we go, opening a new window. And that's the order window. So it's a two layer. It, all these settings have been set uh, according to what you just created. Now, the thing you might wanna change, the, uh, the quantity that you want. Let's say we want five. The thickness, 1.6 is kind of okay. You know, you could go thicker if you think uh, you need the rigidity, uh, but 1.6 is good. Uh, my PC board color, I like blue. Uh, I like without lead free, without lead. Uh, copper weight, one ounce, you could go a little bit thicker if it's a more demanding project, but for us, there's almost no current in here, so that's fine. And the rest, you could just... Uh, and here on the side, you see how much it's gonna cost you for five boards. So the unit price is 642. Three to four days build time, and I guess you add the uh, shipping, so I'll, I'll let you guys know how long it took for me to get them. Of course, if you go to 10, you see the unit price goes down a lot. Now, for a one-off, of course, might not be the best, the best service, uh, but it's always good to have multiple boards, so I would say five is a good option, but if you go to 10, it's like the same price. So play around with the pricing and, you know, choose what you want. So once you're ready, save to cart, and then you can order it. So there you go, guys. Uh, that's the uh, board that we're gonna play with. I'm gonna order these, and uh, when it gets here, I should have the enclosure built, and we'll put it together and test it out. So there you go, guys. So let's go back to the main camera and wrap things up. All right, so there you go, guys. Um, I hope uh, I didn't go too fast, didn't go too slow. I hope it wasn't too boring. It's kind of hard to explain this stuff uh, in a video because, you know, you got to show the steps. Uh, but the best way for you guys to experience this is actually go to EZA.com, open an account, it's free, and uh, just fool around with it. And uh, they're pretty good for help. You know, there's a chat and all that. So uh, if you want to get started, uh, for small projects like this, it's a great way to start. Uh, there's not too many connections, uh, not, to, not too many things can go wrong. Uh, the prices are fairly low, so give it a try and order your own boards uh, for your own projects. And uh, So I just wanted to mention, these are the, uh, the switches we're going to use, the MX Cherry MX switch. There's different kinds, uh, but as you saw when we created the Easy EDA, uh, the, the part we had had multiple holes. These guys have two pins, I don't know if you can see it here. They have two pins, some of them have three pins. Uh, so basically the part that we're using will be compatible with uh, many of these switches. So I just wanted to mention that. And they're different colors too, depending on uh, the resistance uh, that you want. Uh, so there you go guys. So I placed the order for the board. It should be here uh, shortly. Um, the next video is gonna be about building an enclosure. Um, I talked about using a CNC machine to mill uh, PC boards. Uh, what I'm going to do with our uh, CNC machine is actually use uh, Autodesk Fusion 360 to uh, 3D design an enclosure, and then we're going to mill that on the CNC machine. And once it's milled on the CNC machine, we're going to do some vacuum forming of plastic to create that enclosure that is going to house this PC board right here. So I hope you guys uh, join us for that. So uh, like I always say, subscribe to our channel if you like these videos. That way you'll get notified when we post new ones. You can follow us on Facebook and Twitter also, and you'll get notified there uh, as well. Uh, also, don't forget, visit our store, BrainInvest.com, if you want to buy any of these parts. And also, uh, if you go to BrainInvest.com slash tutorials, you'll find information about uh, pretty much all the videos that we do here on YouTube, where you can get, uh, if we use code, uh, libraries, and stuff like that, you'll find links uh, for everything. Uh, so once again, guys, I hope you join us next time. And uh, my name is Ivan, and I hope to catch you guys real soon. Take care.